Hello and welcome to Catalyze Music Academy. My name is Zach Christeter. I'm an Ableton certified trainer. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about audio effects and how to get a little bit more out of your effects to create interesting kind of like morphing, shifting effects between multiple effects, which is a really fun way to just get some weird, interesting sound design and just have some fun, whether you're in the studio or on stage. Before we dive into that, I do want to let you know if you are enjoying the content of the channel, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And if you learn something or if this is useful at all, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear about it. So starting off, uh, we're going to be just going to do with a little basic drum loop. Sounds a little bit like that. Uh, and we're going to start adding some effects to it. And before we get into the details of the morphing stuff, I'm just going to go over some basics of audio effects and audio effect racks. So say I want to add an effect to this, say something like the overdrive, I toss it on here. It adds that effect, right? And then say I want to add another effect, say something like delay. If I toss the delay on here, we're going to get both at the same time. Overdrive first, then the delay. However, if I want to separate these two, if I want to be able to hear the distorted signal and then the delayed signal separate from each other, I can pretty easily just toss them in a rack and make that happen. So the way I'm going to do this is just select one of these devices, hit Command G or Control G if you're on a PC. Uh, that'll put it inside of a rack. We're then going to do open up this button right here. This is our chain button. Uh, that'll open up our chain area right here. And then we can start taking any of our other effects and start dragging them down here. So now we can see we have one chain that is our distortion, and we have one chain that is our delay. So we have one signal going into this rack. It splits it two separate places. Process the, processes those effects separately, and then it outputs it as one signal. So now we can hear. This is just the delay. That's just the distortion, right? And if we play both together, you can hear that the delay does not have distortion on it, which is great. This is a, by itself a fantastic way to just, again, get more out of your effects and different combos of different kinds of effects. Uh, on top of this, we can also control the amount of each layer that we're getting using these volume controls. So if I turn this up and down, I can effectively use these kind of like a dry wet control to control the amount of each layer that we're hearing. So there's another way to do this as well. If we hit this chain button right here, it's going to open up our chain area. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this before. This allows us to select different chains of our rack. Uh, so this blue bar right here that I can click and drag to move around, this determines what we're hearing based off of wherever these blue bars are down here. So if I do something like this, in this situation, we're only going to hear the distortion. If I move this over here, we're only going to hear the delay. If I move this over here, we're not going to hear anything because there's no blue area underneath it. So these blue areas, as you drag them out, uh, you control which layer you're hearing at any given time and allow you to manually select between them. So one thing that I could do is I could have this one say over here and this one over here. And now I either get one or the other. Or if I have an area in the middle where they over intersect or overlap, uh, I get both at the same time or just one. There's also this kind of like lighter whitish area line uh, that you can grab separately than your blue line. And sometimes you have to put your mouse exactly right there to get it. But if you click and drag this guy over, this essentially allows you to create fades, crossfades from one layer to the next. So in this situation, as I drag it from the left to the right, it's going to start with just distortion. And then as it's fading out the distortion, it's going to be fading in the delay. Like that so we can move back and forth and realistically if i want to get a really nice smooth fade between these two different layers i can drag this one all the way out here and this one all the way out here and just do something like this so now i'm, I'm here i'm basically getting 100 or almost 100 uh the distortion So this is a really powerful technique. This allows us to essentially fade or morph from one effect layer to another. However, we're not just limited to 
uh, having one effect at a time here. So right now I just have one overdrive and one delay. If I were to toss in a reverb or literally any effect you want over here with this delay, now I have reverb and delay on this one chain. So these two are now stacked together and we're hearing both at the same time if we are hearing that layer. Uh, so we can have multiple effects on a single chain, as many as you want, infinite basically, as well as we can have more than just two chains. We can have also basically infinite chains. So if I were to right click here uh, in this kind of like area where it says drop audio effects, I can hit create new chain, or you can just grab a new effect and toss it on here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hit create new chain. It's gonna make a new chain for me. And this one, I'm not gonna put any effects on. This is just gonna be a straight up dry chain. So I'm gonna rename this first and just call this dry. And we'll move it to the top. So now what I could do, instead of just morphing between these two different effects, is I could extend this out a little bit here. We'll do something like this. We will select all of them, and we will right click and we will hit distribute ranges equally. That distributes the ranges of all your different uh, layers. Uh, and now what I can do is I can drag them on top of each other a little bit. Do something like that, something like that and basically create fades between these three layers, like this. And, and the layering doesn't need to be precise, doesn't need to be exact. You can kind of like mix and match it however you want, but this should work for functionally what I'm trying to do, which is start with the dry chain. And then as I turn it up, it's gonna fade in the distortion. And then fade out the distortion and fade up the rhythm and delay. And then down here, there's, there's no effects on here, so it's just a dry chain. Uh, so we can keep on adding new chains and basically be able to scroll between lots and lots of different chains. So let's do this one more time, and uh, let's add in a like a Redux, for example, and we'll toss it at the bottom here, and then I'll move it up in between these two. So once again, I will select all of them, distribute my ranges equally, uh, so they're all divided evenly, and then I'm going to drag them a little bit on top of each other so they all overlap a little bit more. And then individually, I got to go in here and do fade ins and fade outs and all that stuff. And we'll tweak some settings on the Redux. So now as I move through this, let's give this a little bit more overlap here, because that sounds cool. Like that. And we can do this, like I said, as many times as we want, and with whatever effects or any combination of effects we want as well. On top of this, there's a few other layers of techniques we can apply. For example, we can get some macros involved here. So uh, this one control right here, instead of manually moving it with my mouse, I could right click on this and map it to macro one. So now I cannot control it over here anymore. It doesn't let me control it here. I have to control it with my macro. So this allows me to scroll through multiple parameters at the same time. Then what I can do is I can start mapping other parameters either to the same knob or to separate macros if I want. So for example, if I wanted to on like my overdrive, take this filter frequency control, I could either map it to the same control. So as I move this, not only is it scrolling through my different layers, it's also changing parameters within those layers, which I think generally sounds really cool. Uh, another really fun control to try this on is something like dry wet. So if I go to each one of these, I could either put the dry wet on the same macro. So as I'm scrolling through, it's also turning up and down, or I could put that on a separate macro. And that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna put this on macro two, the dry wet on this layer, and then the dry wet on this layer, also on macro two, and then also on this one, and this one as well. So now I have all my dry wets on this control right here and then my effects selector here. So I basically am creating like a two macro effects rack where I can select which effect I'm hearing and then the amount of each effect I'm hearing with the second one. So as I scroll through this, I can either keep this turned up way high or I can control it to turn it down here. Uh, if I'm doing it this way, I probably don't need a dry chain right here because 
This is effectively, if I turn this to zero, it's effectively dry anyway. Uh, but this is a really fun setup for, uh, example, for like live performance, because you have two knobs. One controls the effect, which effect you're hearing, whether it controls the amount of the effect you're hearing, which is fantastic. This is also really fun for like XY controllers. So if you have like an iPad or like a touchscreen situation, you can move your finger left and right to control which effect you're hearing, and then up and down to control the amount of the effect. So you can do like weird little like swirly patterns on an XY controller and get cool different combinations of effects. So this is a really fun technique for, for things like that. Um, or as I mentioned, we can continue to use other macros for, to control other parameters. So for example, I could put, uh, I could unmap this from macro one, map this onto macro three. So now I have a filter frequency here that I can control individually. I have a down sampler here that I can put on this one here. And then maybe I'll put like delay time on this one here. So now I have a bunch of different macros that I can control individually. This controls all my dry wets. This controls individual parameters for uh, different effects. And this controls which effect I'm hearing. So between all these different controls, uh, I can now hide everything inside. So I can hit the hide button here because we don't need to look at that. I can hide the devices and I can hide the chain area. So now everything I need is all right here in one place. And now I can send again for live performance, I can just start using this on stage. Or if I want to, I could start using this for production. Uh, a really fun way to do this is to like, start, you know, you could have things modulate over time. Or I could use the pencil tool, and just have different effects kind of be turned on at different times and be able to jump back and forth between them. Uh, right now, I'm just kind of randomly tossing in some values. So I'm not sure if this is going to sound good or not. But Hopefully this gives you the idea of what's going on here. So now, make sure our dry wets are turned up. Um, I could either have it fade around over time, like I did here. Or scrolling through different effects. Or here where it jumps around. So there's lots of different ways you can start applying this. And then of course, we can also get these other guys involved to create more kind of chaos or say randomness, but uh, more interesting variation with our macros. So that's kind of it. That's the idea here. It's really simple. It's really powerful. It's mostly about stacking a bunch of effects on top of each other, opening up your chain area, creating some cool, interesting combination between different amounts of different effects, and then macro mapping the important controls. So you have instant, easy access to whatever parameters you want at any given time. So I'd highly recommend, uh, especially if you're gonna be performing on stage, build a rack like this. Even if you're not, you just like effects, you just like making things sound kind of cool and crazy and weird. Really great technique for expanding what you can do with it. And if you really dial in your kind of crossovers here, you can make some really weird, smooth combinations. It almost sounds like your sound is like flowing from one kind of set of sounds to another uh, in a way that's really satisfying. So that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed watching that. Hopefully that was helpful. And I will see you again in another video. Thanks for watching.